Hello and welcome to our next game, Discover Lands Unknown. Um, normally I at least try to read a rule book and even maybe play a game once or twice before I do a video. Uh, in this situation, I'm not doing that. So I'm going to say this now because I know some of you who view these videos get really annoyed if I go into detail. And some of you really love it when I go into detail. I'm not gonna be able to please all of you, but I'm gonna just say right now that if you're a person who's annoyed with detail, skip to video two. Uh, video one is just gonna go over components and introduce the game. And that's it. And I will do video two when I actually start to play. Um, I am at the setup part of the rule book and we're actually going to learn to play together. And that's the way I'm gonna do this one. Uh, just because this game is, as it says, every game unique. So I'm of the opinion that I can show you everything in my game and it's not going to spoil yours because yours is going to be different. <clears throat> and um, I actually personally know Corey Kaneska who designed this game and he's very tight-lipped, of course, about his designs. We don't really talk shop that much. But um, the one thing I can say is that I gave him a hard time because if every game's unique, even in his playthrough video that he did, he wouldn't spoil things. <laughs> so um, it annoyed the crap out of me. And so uh, anyways, I decided I'm going to show you everything. And um, <clears throat> and if you don't like that, you know, move on. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> with that being said, let's back up here. The, the biomes that I got is I have desert. Um, with a desert terrain, and I guess our scenario one, so see here on this sheet, it says for scenarios one, two, and five, and we're gonna start at scenario one. So we're gonna be doing the desert terrain first, and then I also have the bayou, which I guess we don't get to until scenario three. So the bio, bayou stuff is just shoved to the side, and then there's another one, shoving it to the side, and then I have a whole bunch of tokens I'm gonna just shove to the side. And then I have a giant stack of desert tokens, which I think need to be sorted better, but I haven't read the rules yet, so I don't know. Um, my understanding after watching Corey's video is that these are just generic tokens, so um, I'm keeping those to the side. <clears throat> the rule book does say that these are special monsters, so I put them uh, in their own thing. And one thing I want to point out is... Uh, <clears throat> So the rule book will give you like a component count, but it'll give you a range because your copy is going to be different than mine versus someone else's. And what's really funny is they tell you two to five special monster tokens. And, um, okay, I got two. I see, I see. And then 16 uh, of these monster tokens. And what's interesting is I have two, four, six. I only have eight. So unless I accidentally put them in a different, oh, never mind, never mind. Those are Bayou, and look at this. See the yellow border. So I have eight Bayou ones. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna have to move those to the Bayou, and then my desert pile. I'm gonna have to sort it. So that's some of the discovery. And if some of you are annoyed by it, I don't want to hear it. Do not even post in the comments. I will mute you. And I'm dead serious about that. If you don't like it, I am telling you now to move to another video. I don't get paid to do this. I don't ask you for Patreon money or anything like that. So I don't want to hear it. So sorry folks, just some people have been really rude in the comments. And uh, anyways, I'm going to, I will sort that as we keep talking. But uh, scenario one, we know for sure, is this. The next thing is you're going to have some cards that look like this. These are your quest cards. So what I did is I grabbed scenario one, cry for help, which I'm with the impression that there's like four different types of, of missions you can get. So some of you are going to get the same mission that I have and some of you won't. And then um, it says stage one. And then you can see that there's a stage three and a stage two. I didn't bother reading any of the text, but I just made my little deck. And of course, the rest of the cards for the other scenarios are set aside. Um, it tells you that these are your, your nighttime cards. 
And the red ones, there's more of those. You shuffle those, you shuffle the blue, then you just put the blue on top of the red. I think they said these were like um, level two and these are level one. I mean, I'm sure these are the more deadly ones for as far as bad things <coughs> go. <coughs> I have these and they are by player color because you have to assemble one of these. Um, so they do match player color. Um, I have an idea of what this is. I have no idea what these are. Um, but anyways, I have those set aside. It did say <coughs> that these are items you can craft. And so um, <coughs> I just have those in a pile. And then I have um, these, they said, are basic items uh, that you can... Basic recipe items, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And then these are the advanced ones. Uh, project cards, there they are, project cards. And then you have reference cards, like so. And then there's these threat cards, 12 blue, 12 orange, and they are buried amidst a bunch of your other cards. So um, you do have to dig for those. And then you will get a bunch of these, which are considered um, exploration cards. And it takes a while, but I did sort them by number so I can find them. They're just like our Arkham archive deck. I'm assuming that's what I was supposed to do. I don't know, but I'm assuming the number is important. So that's what I did. And so there's a giant stack of those. I can tell you that Corey said in his video that you're not supposed to check to see if you have a contiguous stream of numbers, and I don't. I have some duplicates. I have some that are not duplicates. It's sometimes it skips by two, sometimes it skips by 10. So don't panic uh, with that. And then here are the enemy cards. And I did the same thing with the enemy cards, a much smaller deck of those. Uh, they give you this stuff, just set it aside. I'm playing as a green guy, so I'll take that out. I'll take out the dice too. Um, these, I just assumed are your basic bits. Um, I'm pretty sure this is for when you have to randomly move a direction. So that'll go along the tiles. And then this, of course, is for who the party leader is. But I'm going to just do a solo game. And so I will take uh, these and just set them aside. And I don't need the, the party leader thing. Okay, so um, with that said, I met the setup here. And what I explained to you got me through here. We created the night deck. So now I'm finding the terrain components. Um, find the reference seat belongs to this scenario. Uh, it shows which terrain specific kinds are needed for the game. And so um, that's this. That's this. And um, okay, so there's going to be a lot to do. Um, and maybe I'll do some of this off camera. But uh, let's see. So first thing it says is sort the cards in these three decks face down in numeric order. Do not shuffle these decks. Uh, a. So you can see you have A, B, and C. And, and then if you look at the scenario, um, we have our, uh, you know, same set of decks. So we have a threat deck of blue for this, and apparently we're not using the orange threat deck. So I'm going to just take the orange ones and set them further aside. And then we have the threat deck of blue. Um, they're saying right here to use crafted item cards 89 through 99. So I'm going to grab these and, oh, that's the whole thing. Jesus. Okay. I thought, I thought for sure this was like 99 down to one or whatever. So that's my entire deck there. Um, the project deck is blue. So, so we're going to use these and then I'm going to set these aside. So that's no problem. I can do that. All right. The enemy cards are 61 through 88. And then there's an asterisk that says, since the contents of the game are unique, your exploration will not have cards of every number shown above. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, 61 through 88. And it says include only one copy of each of the following cards in the exploration deck. If you have duplicates, randomly choose one to keep in the deck and return the others without revealing them. And that's number three, number five. I can tell you with certainty, I have two copies of three and five. So um, I don't even know what, I, you know, I'm following the rules. I'm not peeking at the cards. I have no idea what they are, but I, I know from sorting them that I have two copies of those. All right, so let's go here and it says, um, 
enemy card 61 through 88. So, so we're gonna, so I don't have 88, which it says not to panic. And I'm gonna go down to 61. So it's this deck here. And I'm gonna set that there. And then these other ones, I will set further aside. Okay, now the expiration, it says one to 60. So I'm gonna get rid of anything going down to 60. And you can see I jumped from 100 down to 56. So I'm gonna do that. And then it says uh, number three and number five, we just can't have two copies of those. And you can see right there, I have two copies of number five. So I'll just take the top one and then the, I'll take the bottom one of number three. How about that? So don't know what these are, but I'm setting them aside. And here I have my deck that'll be used for this. And then I'm just gonna take the ones I'm not using and just set them much further out on my table. Like so. Okay, so this is our um, scenario setup. The rule book, of course, is a lot more generic. It's just trying to tell you to do things. So I am gonna have to bounce back and forth, but here's the thing, we get 17 desert map tiles. Of course, I have those. And then it wants me to sort the, uh, the desert feature tokens. So I'm gonna get 14, whatever that is, looks like, uh, uh, like vegetation, 14 stones, 10 looks like animals, and then 14 to 15 wood. Three desert water, eight monster, and one camp token. Well, I can tell you for sure I have the camp token. Um, the, the, my challenge, of course, is everything is just like this. Um, here are three of those. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to consolidate some stuff here. So we're going to get those out and let's start sorting. So one, um, so I'm seeing, you know, there's the rock ones. So uh, I think that's, that's the primary way. And then of course you have these um, and I need three of those. I need eight of these and, and I have this giant stack. So, you know, to go through them, so that's, that would be four, and so that's a monster one, or animal one, five, and then so, see, and I don't know, like, this one has two of them, but I'm, I'm assuming it's that side that you're looking for, and so, um, then we even got water ones. And, and I'm sorry if this is really boring. I'm, <laughs> I apologize. I'm sure this is something I probably sort of sorted before I hit start, but I'm, I'm going through it as fast as I can here. And, oops. And, I'm, my idea here is that I'm trying to, because um, I don't know what you have in your copy that's the same as mine. So I'm sure, because uh, like, see, they have like numbers on them and stuff. Um, where on earth? It's because this is in the wrong pile. Okay. See, and I have to be careful because see, these on the other side are actually. Um, And that's actually wood. So I think I might have to, I might have a few things in the wrong spot, but for the most part, I'm getting this. And um, let's take like that one. And da, 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 da. almost done, folks. Sorry. second one of those and that okay so now um i'm gonna just take all these lumber ones and throw it into this empty one and then i have another one here and i'm gonna put the kebab looking things in there 
Okay, so it says you need about 14 of these uh, vegetation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm already doing an awful job of sorting. I'm down to 12 of those, and there's 13, and there's 14. Okay, so that's good. Then it says uh, 14 of the stone. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then uh, 14 to 15 of these. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I only have 10. So I'm not sure what, I'm sorry, no. 10 of these, 14 to 15 of those. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so we're good there. Uh, eight of these, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then three of these, and as you see, I only have two. And so I'm missing one of those. Um, beyond that, that is my collection. And these you can see are clearly by you, so I don't think I have a desert one mixed in here. Um, Yeah, so I'm, I'm missing one of those uh, water pump looking things. Uh, it is possible it's in, there it is, boom. Okay, so uh, good quality control for FFG. I think I have everything I need to start this scenario. So I'm just gonna slide all this stuff off. And um, so then it looks like we have to create this formation here. And so I'm gonna put my tile in the middle and then you can see that uh, so the tile deck, this one's double-sided like this, but then like these ones have a number on one side and then of course terrain on the other. So I'm just gonna have to take the numbers and, and set it up uh, the way it says. And I've been told that our terrain tiles, even though I have desert and you have desert, that they're not always gonna be the same. I, I don't know how much of it's not the same or is, but uh, anyways, um, I think we have uniqueness even in that uh, type of regard. So, um, so that's how you get all the components you need to start. And this scenario guide, other than um, setting this up, I have everything I need uh, to set this up. So uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, obviously they have a reference sheet on the back. So we will set that up uh, eventually, but I wanna now go back and look at the rule book real quick. So, um, for example, it says project deck. Shuffle the project cards into a face down deck. All right, so the project deck is B, which is this. And that's these, uh, these. It's a really small deck. So they just said shuffle them and put them face down. So I will do that. Okay, and then the threat deck is C, that's these. So it says shuffle them. So I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle them real quick. And um, it says, put them in a face down deck and place it near the crafted item deck. If the reference seat shows advanced project cards with a red back, shuffle them into a separate deck. So I'm just putting those down. Oh, I was reading this and then accidentally started reading some of that. <laughs> um, okay. Terrain specific tokens. So gather the map tiles, water. Okay, we did that. That's the thing you just begrudgingly probably uh, watched me do. That I apologize if it took too long. And then there's common tokens, which are these. And um, so I have some of them in here. So the campfires and then these, you know, compass looking things are in one. And then uh, these types of tokens I have in a giant unsorted bundle right now and then I have those only two of these and those are the special monster tokens um and then it says return all other map tiles features etc you know they'll not be used in the game um <clears throat> these of course are common so those of course will be used and then it's telling you to build the map um let me see if there's anything here that is noteworthy is artwork on both sides, shuffle them according to numbers, and then place the token at the edge of the map. I mean, that's just for when you roll a die, you know, you can determine randomness for direction. Uh, the image on the right shows the island map. 
Assign characters. Shuffle the character cards and deal two cards to each player. You secretly choose after all players have been chosen. They simultaneously reveal their cards. If playing a solo game, that player draws four and chooses one. Very cool. Okay, so we didn't talk about that. So let me spoil you with what I got. I got quite a few. First one is a chemist. Then a used car salesman. A bouncer. A chef. A Girl Scout, a Hunter, Head of Surgery, a Weightlifter, a Marathon Runner, a Soldier, a Gardener, and the Inventor. So that's what I got. Um, and so I think we're at a spot now where we should, we should build the map, figure out who our characters are, and then we'll read Section 7, which is the setup for the Survivor. And then we're ready to play. So, um, um, if you guys don't mind, I will set up that uh, map uh, off video. I don't think you need my help with that. I hope you don't. Um, the, it's just simple. I'm saying simple, and please don't get upset if it doesn't seem simple to you. Um, um, you're just going to follow this pattern and just make sure that you have these tiles that are numbered one. You shuffle those, and then you just randomly set them wherever you see a one, and then the twos and the threes and the fours. And then this thing up here uh, is just this token. And make sure you put that in. And it doesn't matter which direction it faces because what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll a die. And so if you have it facing like this and you roll 11 to 12, then that means that they're gonna move, you know, in what would we, call, we would call the north direction. And, uh, and if somebody else sets it up this way, it just means that 11 or 12 means they're gonna roll, go that direction, that's all. Um, okay, so uh, I'll set that up in between videos. Uh, let's, I just shuffled the, uh, the character cards. So let's draw four. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna set the others aside. So what do we get? We got the gardener, the bouncer, the head of surgery and the chef. Okay, I'm assuming this is stamina. Uh, one of them, if at a fire, spend one meat to gain two food. Three, choose yourself or another survivor on a space and roll die. On an eight to 12, heal one damage. From a survivor on a one, that survivor suffers some other type of damage. If you choose yourself, you would suffer that other type of damage if you got a one to two. The Bouncer. During combat, you may spend poison, salvage, stone, or wood as if it were another resource type. And then the Gardener. After you move into a space with a face-down wood feature token, you may discard it to gain one food. I honestly don't know the rules of the game, so I don't know which one would be better than another. I can tell you that thematically, I like these two more. This, uh, like if I ever play Fallout or any game like that, I usually like to play... Um, and I'm talking the classic fallouts, not the, the later ones, but, um, uh, or even Wasteland. I, I like being the doctor type character. Um, and then of course the chef, uh, I always think from a survival perspective, being able to make two food out of one is pretty good. Uh, these two, I don't know what the benefits would be. I have to, I think, play the game to figure out what those benefits would be. So I'm leaning towards these two. This one mostly from a role-playing perspective and this one just from a survival gut feel perspective. So um, I might change my mind, but I'm gonna go with, um, ooh. I'm gonna go with the chef for now. Um, I do, I was hoping to get the inventor, to be honest. Um, that one seemed like it was really interesting that you could play around with. But uh, for now, that's what we're gonna do. We'll, we'll be the chef. Okay, so um, the rest of the setup, each of the flare players receive the following items. You get your character tracker. Uh, that's this, this thing right here. Um, you do have to assemble this. Um, set the three dials to the hearts, which I believe they already are. And set the stamina for a one player game to 12. So I'm gonna set this up to 12. One food and one clean water resource token. So I'm assuming that that's a food. 
and that that's a clean water. And if not, I will figure it out later. Um, but I'm assuming that this side is the food. So I'm gonna just take those for now. And uh, the three combat support cards matching the color of the character. If playing a solo game, these are not used. Oh, okay. So uh, what they're referring to are these. So if you're playing a solo game, they're not used. And I guess it's because like if you're combating with another player, this would be some secret card you would, you would play. Sort of like a rock, paper, scissors type of effect. Um, so I'm gonna put those out. And one survivor figure matching the color, we got that. That's this dude. And place this figure at camp. I will do that once I set it up. Players are now ready to begin the game. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and end this video and I will set that map up offline. And then when I come back, um, oh, and by the way, I just needed to pay attention. There's what I needed right there. And, um, oh, I skipped D. Draw a number of cards from the top of the normal project deck based on the number of players. So in a one player game, we're gonna draw three cards, uh, keeping them secret, but we don't have to keep them secret. And these are our three. So we got a water pouch, a bola, and a spear. So those look pretty cool. I'm very excited. I, I really like Robinson Crusoe and I'm already getting that feel. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see how this plays. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end this now. I will set up my map offline and that'll be ready when we get back. And then uh, for those that wanted to skip video one, uh, we will get right into gameplay with uh, video two. Thanks for watching. Um, and I uh, really appreciate uh, all the support, and uh, I'm really excited to try this game out.